Everything new in Home Assistant 2022. Home Assistant has found a way to bring all your smart gadgets into your home on one platform. With this, you can keep an eye on the energy you are using or even when each gadget performs an action. It is quite a powerful platform and there are developers all over the world making sure that it remains stronger. With this, the platform is updated every month. Today, we look at the new version of Home Assistant version 2022.7, which will be released on July 6th. So before we get started, subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos like this one. The June release of Home Assistant marked the halfway mark for new releases this year. There were several improvements and additions in this version, all of which made the software smoother than ever. Log Book Update The first place you will notice a significant upgrade is in the log book. The log book is the part where you can see the history of your devices and sensors. With this section, you can keep track of when a sensor or device was turned on, when it was turned off, or what the value of a sensor was at a given time. However, the 2022.6 version saw a lot of improvements here. The most obvious one was that the logbook was now faster than in previous releases. It would take a little longer to load the larger installs for the earlier releases, which depended on how much history there was. However, the new version saw an increase in speed as it loaded faster than ever. It was also very responsive, which is bound to increase in the 2022.7 version. This latest version that is coming may see all of these improvements and you may be able to see your history instantly with very minimal buffering. For those who use the logbook more often, you will notice that it has been added to more locations. When you enter an integration and select a device, you will see the logbook there. It will also be displayed on the device page and you will start receiving real-time updates as the device and entities change. This is super useful, especially if you are debugging. It also plays a massive role in giving you more visibility of what's happening. This might see an upgrade in the future update, making the entire process smoother and better. The developers also upgraded the logbook to support any entity. Some things, such as button presses of remotes or other devices, will now show as event data in the logbook. You can keep an eye on your kid when you ground them from watching TV. All this is possible as long as the integration supports it. However, with the new update, we might see the logbook supporting a more comprehensive range of devices and integrations. Maybe even more than 90% of the devices. In addition, the logbook data can now be viewed live. With the latest release, it will now be updated in real time. You will no longer have to wait for the date range logbook cards to update. They are all updating instantly now which is even better for debugging. This might just see some bugs fixed with the 2022.7 release. Energy Usage Tracker Speaking of date and time, Home Assistant can now keep better track of the energy that you have used, and you can see all this using the Fantastic Energy Dashboard. Now you can even compare data against the previous period. It makes it easier to keep track of your energy consumption and figure out what is consuming more power than others. To compare the data, you can just hit the Compare Data button and see the comparison data for the previous month. The new update in July may improve this with better comparisons for each device or sensor. They might even include a place where you can set the energy consumption limit for each device for a certain period. Calendar Events Trigger you may remember that in May's release, they included a new calendar trigger, which would go ahead and start automation from a calendar event. For example, you can now set it so that your office lighting will change when a Zoom meeting is about five minutes from starting. With the new update in June, we saw that you could now offset the time on the calendar trigger. Suppose you were to compare with the previous example. In that case, you can now do multiple things before your meeting or something else. For example, five minutes before the meeting, you can set it so that it will turn up your office lights, set your meeting indicator, enable your microphone, and even switch your camera on. Text-to-speech notifications update. 
It is also integrated in an easier way of sending text to speech notifications that can be set to let you know when your meeting is almost starting. This is quite helpful in automation because you can mess around with it. The new upcoming version may see some of the bugs being fixed and give you the power to automate up to 10 things simultaneously. OAuth integrations. The developers have now made it easy to manage application credentials for OAuth integrations. This might be something that you are not familiar with, but for those of you who seem lost, OAuth is an authentication method that helps integrate third-party services. Such services include Xbox or Spotify. With the update that was made in June, it is now easier to manage all OAuth credentials. This is thanks to a new tab that was added to the interface. This will help you stay on top of everything. You can now get rid of YAML when setting up a new integration that will require an OAuth token. As an improvement, you will now have a guide when setting up a new integration or new OAuth credentials. Furthermore, you can now see all of your application credentials in the interface. This will allow you to take a quick look at all of the credentials that you have already set up. This will be made smoother with the new integration coming soon. The developers may also decide to allow you to change your credentials when necessary. Scene Editor Update The Scene Editor has also received a significant upgrade. Instead of including an entire device as a whole in a scene, you can now select individual entities. Devices obviously have multiple entities. Sometimes you may just want to use a few of them, not the entire device. The latest upgrade makes it easier to do this as you can select a single entity from that scene. This will be updated in the 2022.7 release, which will include bug fixes and many new integrations. Database Integration Update the database has also received a significant upgrade with most aimed at improvements. It can now offer disk write reductions, which plays a significant role in preserving the lifetimes of the SD cards. In addition to that, these improvements have seen a reduction in the database. The size has been reduced by about 25 to 40%. This has been the third database performance improvement and people love it. Since another update has been requested by a lot of people, it might just come to be. The database integration may be made even smoother this time, and the size is reduced by a couple more percentages. The developers may go for less space in the future update. New Media Update Those are just some of the significant upgrades we saw in the previous upgrade. However, as with every update, some minor upgrades are constantly being done, with some new integrations here or there. Some of the most notable changes are the GStreamer and VLC Media Player, which have now been added to the media browser. Furthermore, the camera feed on every camera before was moved to the device settings. Interface Updates You can now style your interface the way you like it with the 100 new material design icons. With the latest version coming shortly, we might just see new icons being released the previous version received seven new integrations, all working to make the Home Assistant even more powerful. With the upcoming update, we might see these seven integrations updated as well, making them even more powerful. In addition, we might just see several new integrations with smart devices and gadgets being released from time to time. Z-Wave Fireware Update Another update that is coming is the update to the firmware for your Z-Wave devices. You can now do this directly from your Home Assistant without connecting to the device's software separately. All you need to do is go to the device page where you will now find the possibility to upload firmware to your Z-Wave device. Python 10 Update The developers of Home Assistant have also made some updates to the latest version of Python, Python 10. It has better features, making integrating Python and automating any of your devices more accessible. We can expect a lot of updates with the latest version of Home Assistant, which is bound to be released soon. Updates on Matter, ESP Audio, Python 10, and so many more cool features. We can only wait to see what is really to come. Which upgrade are you eagerly waiting for? Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Also subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed and I'll personally reply to your comment. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.